So today we're going to learn how to do transfers. There are many ways to transfer the sphere from one hand to the other, but if I showed you all of them, we'd be here forever. So the way I like to teach transfer is like modes that you would learn with a musical instrument. So I'm going to show you the most common transfers and ways to understand them. All right, step one, we're simply going to look at our hands. We're going to realize that one, there's a side that has a palm and the other side that does not have a palm. And for this lesson, I have marked my hand with an A for the palm side and a B for the side that's not the palm or the back of the hand. I'm going to be using these, so just be sure to remember that A is palm side and B is not palm side for step two. So in step one, we established that the palm side of our hand is A and the back hand is B. So the modes are as follows. A can go to A, A can go to B, B can go to A, and B can go to B. And so now I'm gonna show you four transfers that use each of these modes so you have an idea on how to do them and how to use the modes to your advantage. Our first transfer is a very easy one. We're gonna start off with A to A or fingertip to palm, as um, you'll see in a lot of forums and in like common conversation about contact journaling. Um, what I like to do is when I show people is I put the sphere in the palm of the hand nice and flat and you're gonna bring your other palm out in front of you and you're gonna use your index and your middle finger and place them on the palm of your receiving hand out in front of you. And you're simply gonna use your index and your middle finger as a guide to let it go into the other palm. And then you can bring your other hand forward, use your index and your middle finger as a track and do the same thing. And what this leads up into, if you keep just going forward like this, is into a walking isolation. And I'm not teaching this this lesson, but I will be teaching it in the future. And so that's how you do your fingertip to palm transfer. So the next transfer is just as easy as the first one, except it's going from B to A. It's exactly the same as going fingertip to palm, except you're using the back of your hand. So you put your sphere in the cradle, put your hand right out in front like you did before, and use your index and your middle finger or your index and your ring finger to guide the sphere into the palm of your hand. Now, this one you can't really do a walk with, per se, but you can do a simple trick in between to get the idea how the transfer is going to work. So the next transfer we're gonna learn is going to be from A to B. The A to B transfer is the where it starts to get a little bit more difficult because now we're going into unfamiliar ground to the back of your hand. So my advice is to take this really slow and as you do it, be conscious about how you're putting the sphere into your cradle. And so the way I start is by putting the sphere on the palm of the hand, of course, and using the fingertips as a track like we did with the palm, uh, from fingertips to the palm and from the back of the hand to the palm. And I have my hand ready nice and flat like this and bring it over and actually push the sphere up and into my cradle like so. So from the palm to the back of the hand, bring it up and into it and then come back around. My big tip for this one is don't let go of the sphere until you know it's in the cradle. And then as you get more comfortable with it, you'll be able to ditch the sphere into the other hand faster, to the point to where your hands don't even touch. All right, so the last transfer I'm gonna show you is from B to B, or as a lot of people know it as like the butterfly transfer, or the over the fingertips transfer, or whatever. But regardless, it's gonna be this one right here, so once you've seen it, you probably know it. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna put the sphere on the back of our hand and have our thumb close to our chest. And then we're gonna bring our receiving hand, notice I didn't say right or left hand, but our receiving hand to the outside. And the reason why we want our receiving hand on the outside is because we have it on the inside. One, our hand blocks the sphere, and two, our wrists are not meant to bend up and out like that. So, receiving hand to the outside, and what we're going to do is that we're going to tilt our hand up and put it onto the receiving hand. 
And so this way it gives us a lot of control and we don't have to let go of the sphere and sort of balance it out and figure it out before it's too late. So let me show you again. Back of the hand, receiving hand on the outside, push it over there. See I've created the little hold right there. Flatten it out, bring the hand away over the fingertips. And this is very important to practice on both sides. So if you only learn how to go in one direction, you start to look like this, like a roller coaster. You want to be able to go both ways. And it's the same idea. Receiving hand is on the outside. So with my right hand, thumb towards my chest, left hand or receiving hand comes out. I dump it over and I bring it out and over the top. So do this very slow, very controlled. And on the next step, I'm going to show you how to clean up all these transfers and uh, use them in a fluid movement. Always important that after you learn a trick and you feel like you have it down is to start cleaning it up. And um, what I mean by that is now to give the sphere fluidity and a place for it to go. So with all these transfers, it's very easy to get caught into this. Or this. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a style that is more static than others but it's always important to explore. And so I am a big proponent of learning how to do very fluid movements and move around and move the sphere in many directions and give it a path so people have something to follow. And so with transfers, remember that you have your modes and as you go through these transfers to make sure you give them movement. So if you're going from back of the hand to the back of the hand, give it a little dip on the end. If you're going from A to B, should we make a big infinity right there? A to A is very simple. It's just making it snake across in front of you. Or give it a small pattern like so. Or from B to A, just making it go back and forth, back and forth. So that's my lesson for today. Um, hopefully the next lesson doesn't come with a year and a half or more hiatus. Um, and I plan on teaching arm rolls for my next lesson. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. Um, thank you so much for liking and commenting, and I appreciate all your comments. And uh, do the same for this video.